Fox News alert, an avalanche of news today. We'll get to the stunning Steinle verdict out in San Francisco in just a moment. But we begin with the breaking new developments on the Mueller investigation in Washington. Today, former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn appeared in federal court and pleaded guilty to lying to the FBI about his conversations with Russia's ambassador during the transition last December. His plea agreement indicates he is providing information to the special counsel that's advancing the investigation. Chief Intelligence Correspondent Catherine Herridge was inside the courtroom earlier and joins us now with the very latest details. Anything new, Catherine, since we spoke at 2 o'clock? Well, one of the most interesting developments uh, comes out of uh, reporting by uh, another one of our colleagues, uh, Brett Thayer. We were able to get information that in the spring of this year, FBI Director James Comey testified in a closed-door session that his agents had concluded that Flynn uh, made some sort of bad decisions or didn't remember things properly, seemed kind of confused about the timeline of events in December, but they didn't believe he had deliberately misled them. That's significant because if you fast forward to today, about seven months later, the special counsel investigators under Robert Mueller have concluded something very different, that there was a deliberate effort by Flynn to mislead the FBI about Flynn's contacts with the Russian ambassador. And Flynn agreed uh, in court today. What I would say about his appearance in court today is that he was very composed. He seemed to really reach inside himself and have that soldier's discipline and that 33 years of service in the military allowed him to hold it together as he made that guilty plea, which is a felony. The other interesting thing we're looking at tonight is that in the court records that were unsealed, there are references to what appear to be two members of the Trump transition team, a more junior person who received information from Flynn at Mar-a-Lago in December about these conversations with the Russian ambassador. We believe that to be KT McFarland uh, at this point, and then a more senior person who was directing Flynn to reach out to a number of countries, including Russia, and we believe that to be Jared Kushner. But I would give you this caveat. We were told that it wasn't like Kushner was saying to Flynn, you go out and just talk to the Russians. It was a kind of divvying up of the phone calls. There were different teams for different countries, and they were all tasked with a, a certain amount of outreach uh, at that time. So it's, it's not quite as sort of sinister sounding, perhaps, as it is uh, in the black and white of the court documents. But we believe the very senior person uh, was Jared Kushner and that he testified to that uh, in his session with the special counsel uh, in November, Dana. All right, Catherine Herridge, mm -hmm. thanks so much. We'll take it around the table. I worked at the Justice Department for about a year uh, and know to approach these things with caution. So I don't I, I'm just waiting to see what else is going to happen out of this. I don't think that we know the full story yet. What do you think, Greg? Well, I always like to focus on the media and the media. They remind me of a contestant on Price is Right. They were, ex <laughs> they were expecting a brand new car, which was Russian collusion, and instead they got a crock pot, which is a lie, a single crime uh, committed by a pleading guilty to it, a single isolated event that has nothing to do with Russian collusion because it happened after the election. So they said they, the, the ecstatic media is going to be ecstatic for a few days, but then it's going to wear off and they're going to realize that this is a far cry from what they really wanted, and they're actually seeding turf on this, that this is far from what they dreamt. Now, but what really bugs me about this is if you look at why the meeting took place, why were the contacts made, was it anything nefarious? No, it was something noble and possible. I mean, something, I, in my opinion, noble and correct, was to get Russia involved in fighting terror and fighting ISIS, and uh, actually their version of a reset button that actually made kind of sense, which we may or may not have happened, I don't know. But that's what this was about in my opinion. Yeah. Tucker, you're giving me that weird look you give people on your show. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was thinking just, that, no, I'm actually agreeing with everything you say. I think the irony... No, is, you're, you're, you say that to the people you're about to yell at. You say, I agree completely. But in this case, it's heartfelt. <laughs> okay. No, I actually think that, that the General Flynn did do something wrong. In fact, indefensible. He took money from a foreign government to influence American policy mm -hmm. when he was on his way to being national security advisor from the Erdogan government in Turkey. I don't think you can defend that. I'm ashamed that he did that. Mm -hmm. And that's not what he's being punished for. He's being punished for lying, which is the classic charge you level when you don't really have the underlying charge proved. But more to the point, is there a crime in contacting Russia to talk about how to coordinate your efforts in Syria against ISIS? That seems not just... But maybe he's getting the chance to do this guilty plea 
because For sure. of something there's else. A lot I mean, there's a lot. No, but, but I guess what bugs me is the <laughs> idea that speaking to Russia is in itself a crime. I don't think that's, what, crime, think that's, what, I don't think that's what the prosecuting documents are saying. I think what, what are they the, saying? The prosecuting documents saying that he lied to, F he lied to the FBI, number one. And I think they use that as sort of a carrot and stick to say, we will charge you for just this one crime so you could tell us what else you know. And in his statement to the press, he indicated, I plan on working, uh, fully cooperating with the special counsel. I, I got it, but what's, not what, to what mention, would the underlying crime be? I'm just not, confused. We don't know that yet, because it's still sealed. And well, not to mention the fact that talking, and when you are a transitioning government, when the Obama administration was still the the government in control, mm -hmm. talking to a foreign agency about what, a foreign entity about what you can, what you will and will not do is against the Logan Act, which is the act that says only one administration can talk to a foreign government at one time. Right. So he did violate a law, but we'll have to see what Mueller does but here. how is it any more different than when Obama said, I'll have more flexibility after, you know, the election? I mean, I think that Greg brings up a really great... When did he say that? Obama said <laughs> that. Mike. Uh, hot, mic, hot, mic. hot mic moment. What do you mean, hot how mic. is it any different? Well, what I mean is that it's a transition, and they're signaling to these people on these other countries that, you know, policies are going to change. I think that Greg brings up a really good point about... I often do, Rachel. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> I guess you I'm past your first yeah, show. That's my first test. <laughs> that's all it takes. You gotta agree with that's that. All it takes. Um, but but I think you bring up a point. There is a giddiness, kind of like the giddiness we saw with um, Rachel Maddow when she thought she had the big taxes thing. Um, I think you're right. They got a crockpot here because in the end, um, what they really want to do is not Russia. What they really want to do is stop the Trump agenda. And Trump was just a vehicle for this agenda. The American people still want all the things that Trump wants to do. They still still want those policies and those ideas to come forward. So whether all this Russia stuff happens or not, I think it leads the Democrats, again, down this little this little street off of what they need to do. And what they need to do is figure out why they lost working class Americans. I, because we know that's why they lost the election, so, so, not Russia. So, Rachel, I'll give you that. And I've said that before. I think Democrats need to work on our message. We need to learn, learn how to talk to blue collar voters and some white collar voters. And I'm not an uh, impeachment Democrat. I'm not like, let's go impeach them. I'm actually waiting for all the facts to come out. I've said that over and over again. But when you look at where we are right now, the fact that Mike Flynn, one of the highest officials in Donald Trump's national security apparatus has said he is going to work with the, pro the special counsel prosecuting or looking into this Russia collusion. I think that's a big deal. Well, I think I'm, to I'm, downplay wait, wait, hold that on, hold on, hold on. is silly. Wait, no, slow down. Is that what he has said? I'm going to look into collusion with Russia? Collusion about what? The context that we know of took place. It is a after, Russia wait, investigation. Let me, let, me, let me just finish my question to you, and then you can inform me of this. What would the collusion look like, potentially? I have no idea. Place. That's what we're trying to figure out. No, but out. this is, I think... After the election. It was after the election, so what would they be colluding on, exactly? We, I mean, here's Fighting the thing. ISIS there's in there's Syria? It doesn't matter. Yeah. That's there's the multiple... It doesn't matter. Well, well, That's how this started. The whole, the whole premise was about the election, but they really don't care about the election. This is about unseating a president. That's, that's, right. that's, that's, that's not. Right. I, I'm sorry. That's not, I, just, I have to say that that's just not true, because if you look at all the... You have, you're looking at the Flynn indictment in a vacuum, and you can't do that. You have to look at Flynn. You have to look at Pop. Papadopoulos, you have to look at Manafort. Oh. Manafort was indicted for things that happened during the convention, prior to the election. Papadopoulos, he was in meetings prior to the election. So let's, before we sit here and say, oh, you can't look at Flynn in a vacuum. But I'm not saying that. I'm just asking you what it large, means. What are you I, saying? I don't know. Okay. I, and that's what Dana's saying. We don't know what it means. I, we, are, we have an expert prosecutor, the best in the country, okay, looking at this. Know, what might it mean? Like, what, what's the worst case I don't scenario? want to make any assumptions, because okay. I don't totally. know. What I think... How are you I, confused? I rigged the Sochi Olympics. That's what we're going to no, find no, out. No, no, no. I mean, I'm, so, I mean, I'm sorry. I don't think there's any confusion to be had here. I think what Mueller, Mueller is looking into whether or not Trump and his associates talk to the Russians, work with the Russians, colluded with the Russians. About what? We all already know that the Russians engage in our election and they jeopardized our democracy, number we one. We don't know that. Yes, and we do. The DNI, the DNI, what, the what DNI I, said, and multiple intelligence agencies over going. and over have said that the Russians can, tried to compromise our election. Can, that is a fact. Can I tell you what Trump really is guilty of? It's he not is, a fact, Richard. Trump it is, is a fact. Trump is guilty of bad judgment. A lot of people told him not to give that very high-level position Agreed. to Flynn. But this is a very common rookie mistake. Uh, Dana, you know this. You're in politics in that... Um, a lot of candidates, first-time candidates. Remember, we're talking about a first-time candidate. He's our president, but he's a first-time candidate. You feel very loyal to the people that brought you, um, to, you know, to victory. And so I think he had, Trump had a, a, a very typical first-candidate mistake of 
giving a job to somebody who was on the campaign who probably shouldn't have had that job. And look, he only lasted 20 some days. So they reversed course well, right I mean, away. He was lobbying for the Turkish government. Right. He should not so have. So that's yeah. totally no, disqualifying. I, mean, I, that, and I just want to be clear. I'm absolutely. not defending Flynn. I and mean, that's either. appalling. I wish he were being punished for the actual crime. Thank you. Which he is might that. be. Yes. I mean, he, but maybe the reason that he's not being punished for the actual crime is for some reason that we don't know. Well, that's and I think possible. that is, I mean, we, <laughs> this is why this takes a long time. It might be wrapped up sooner than we think. But remember, it was also President Obama who told President Trump, be careful of this guy. Right. It's Sally Yates who goes to them at the White House and right. goes to the White House from the Justice Department and says, I think you guys have a problem here. She gets fired. The president's calling for Comey to go easy on Flynn. That go Thank and you. that's how they end up with the special counsel. I don't know how all of this pulls together, but it's certainly not nothing. And by the way, if it's, I agree, nothing here when you're calling to Russia to say, hey, make sure we have established contact, no problem. Somebody like Mike Flynn, who is a seasoned patriot, 33 years in the military, why lie about that? That's the thing that I don't understand, but he pled guilty to it today. Thank but why you. isn't the FBI also... Because they're threatening why, him. That's but why isn't Mueller also... Or, or do we know if he is? No, but why the underlying, though? Why lie? Why lie? They, they're threatening lie, him. So let, he, me, let me put it this lied? way. Why lie? I haven't, yeah. the, I haven't the faintest idea, no, but I do know question. having known a number of people who've been busted on the lying to a federal agent thing, and I don't want to appear to be defending someone I just attacked for lobbying for yeah. Turkey... But I, we are vesting far too much trust in the FBI. Do you That's have right. any idea what it looks like when they come after you? Do you know anyone who's been gone after by the FBI? Very well. Do, yeah, I, I do, so too. Do I. I was a I spokesperson for and one so for several my years. My question is, you know, I like the FBI and I support American law enforcement, but which is a potentially a greater threat to you, Mike Flynn or the FBI? It's not a close call. So I don't think we should just assume that because someone has pled to lying that there's an actual crime in that. And he said he's a broken man. His house is under... Uh, he's selling his house. His, his finances are in trouble. These are all very good motivations to, you know, cooperate. All right. Well, I think we're going to finish that up, right? Okay, much more ahead.